Surprise. A Justin Fields breakdown. It's funny because I initially planned on doing this next week, but I was so excited to watch the player in general that I started the film process the day of having this idea. Today we're looking at one of the most electric young quarterbacks in today's NFL, and there's no secret in the fact that Fields did spend most of the 22 season with the subpar supporting cast compared to other quarterbacks, but now, we want to see a guy who, with the help of some additional weapons and offensive line help, is poised to take an enormous step in the upcoming season. You can get comfortable for this breakdown because there's a lot of different things I want to talk about, and by the end of this video, I would appreciate it if everyone drops down in the comments and gives their take on what specific tweak will leap fields in the superstardom. Now, I want to start by saying that for me, the biggest critiques I would give to fields are based around his mechanics rather than his processor. And I want to start off with some of that good decision making to really emphasize because there's a lot of unfair and kind of lazy takes on Fields as a passer. In week 9 versus Miami, the Dolphins basically told Fields, we're playing man coverage because we don't think you can beat it and we'll live with your scrambling ability as it's more taxing to run the entire drive than pass. Right here in the red zone, we're going to clear out with the 1 and 2, 2 being the safety holder and Darnell Mooney's going to run a corner into nothing but open space. And when he separates, the ball is going to be there for him. And I know somewhere, someone's saying that this is the only read that he could make here. And exactly. What we're going to see is that this is not as consistent as we want it to be just yet. When I talk about processor, it's not always first, second, third read. Sometimes it's knowing the first read, seeing it, and getting the ball out immediately when you know you have it. Timing is everything. And I want to show this play from the inside view as well because like I said, it won't be as consistent, I promise you. Now, interesting enough, despite being under pressure, this may be one of the best examples of good overall mechanics from Fields. His back foot doesn't get wide here. He's using that backstroke motion to get into proper position, which fires his back hip through to get parallel, and the icing on the cake is that his release point is forming that L-shaped motion, which quarterback coaches all love. It's a great ball, a great rep, and keep this in mind as we head through. And I like this play to further solidify why I feel how I do about Fields as a processor. A lot of times we break down coverages versus routes pre-snap, but I want to step into an offensive, attacking mindset where I think post-snap matters kind of more in their eyes. All offenses have read players in the defense, and that is a guy who essentially determines what we do as an offense. As the play rolls, we see that the Lions outside linebacker has a lock call on Cole Komet. So that flat route is not there on this boot play. The corner here is engaged with this corner route, which leaves our last hope as the crosser off of the backside. Either we're going to hit the gas and go, or we're firing the football to this guy. And this gets me back to our read players. For one, the field side corner is out of this play, and now the only viable threat left would be an outside linebacker getting depth underneath the crosser. However, once I see him in my face, I know nobody's there to stop the ball if I let it go right now. And there's a world where we love if he could have gotten this ball off a tad faster to prevent literally anybody from thinking about making a play. But overall, I love the process and I love the throwing ability in mobile situations. Right here, we have some more examples of good decision making and timing from fields. And what you're noticing throughout these clips is that the guys I'm highlighting are all read players, which serves as critical tells that help Justin decide where he wants to go with the football. Specifically here. Another look of good decision making and processing against a three shell look versus the Packers. Really, it was common that Chicago tried to high low corners on the outside to make things a bit easier for Fields. And really, all that's doing is if he's sinking, we go underneath him. If he's stagnant and flat footed, we go over the top. But this is going to transition me into my next point. It was kind of rough to evaluate Fields like we would most quarterbacks because he was consistently pressured and dealt with a lot of things that were out of his control. And yet. Up to this point, what we saw is a smart quarterback and an accurate quarterback who can make a variety of throws on and off platform. And that's without even touching on the ultra athleticism in the run game. So we think, what's preventing him from being that great quarterback? And for me, when I talk about that one step away, it all comes down to improving from the guy in 2022 who I saw was not consistent with his mechanics and didn't always trust his reads even when they were really good reads. Now, I told you to keep the touchdown play to Mooney where we saw a great ball and great pocket mechanics in mind because that might have been the only time you ever saw it. Just jokes, of course, but when I hear people say Fields isn't accurate or Fields isn't a good quarterback, 
I'm a guy who always goes back to the mechanics. Now, this is a very weird comparison, but think of Anthony Richardson, another quarterback who can make amazing throws, but also miss the easiest ones in the book. I think a small part is a confidence thing in the fact that Fields will try different arm angles and kind of have a mindset that he can just use his arm and make these easier throws, but that hasn't proven to necessarily work. Right here against the Eagles, notice the wide base by Fields. Now I'm going to put this side by side with Bengals Joe Burrow and really show the comparison. We see that Burrow is more compact, and as a result, this allows him to transfer his weight beautifully. It truly looks like one motion when he's throwing the football. And I talked about that backstroke motion and transferring from back foot through the front and being able to completely sink the hips fluidly, getting even as possible with the target. And getting the knees in a proper position as well. Now, of course, the throwing motions are different, Burrow being more compact and upward, while Fields is elongated as he extends his elbow out before getting into his rotation. But I wouldn't really jump on that because all quarterbacks are unique in that sense, and this works for Fields. But footwork is something that should be consistent amongst all of the elite quarterbacks. Now, the last thing I want to touch on is really trusting your reads. Right here, we see a couple clips where we have some guys who are open enough to make throws and them being throws that we know Fields can make, but we have to think, did that supporting cast make him lose trust in his reads and did constant pressure make him speed up his mechanics? Now, there are two really good plays which I think depict this perfectly. First play is when your timing is off, but you get away with it. So I've done a breakdown on the Lions defense. You can check that out after this. And we talked about that Tampa 2 that they love to run with Aaron Glenn. Now, my point in bringing up the Lions, which a lot of Bears fans hate, is because that if I know this and if you guys know this, I know the Bears know a lot more than me and you. So I already know that Fields know what the right play is right here. And that's why I wanted to get it there. But again, offensive mindset post snap reads i see my safeties going into deep halves and the boundary corner is flat footed so once i look at the shell i see the personnel and i look at my pre-snap reads i know that number two should be open now as we really dive into the play it could be the case that fields gets caught up here trying to send this tight end up the middle against alex anzalone we're going against cover two we're just going to send him up the middle kind of adjust his route to beat the coverage but he could also be manipulating the coverage to ensure that the throw to number two is wide open. Personally, I do believe he could throw this ball to two a tad bit earlier, and right here it's really not a problem. I don't even know if this play is really a knock, but in this last play, we're going to see how a small habit that really didn't bite you can and will come back up. We got cover two by the Packers, and our read player is the field side corner. Can't really see his number here, but mind you, this might have been Fields' best passing game. So as a playmaker, I understand in the moment you want to wheel your team to victory because we have to understand this is in a moment where it's close, where this team is still trying to win. They lost this one 28 to 19 tight ball game. So with everything going on, he's in his rhythm up to this point. Like I said, I actually love this read, but if you're going to make this throw, it has to be as soon as that corner breaks to the flat, literally. And that slight delay in the time allows this hook to curl defender to recover underneath your receiver and a dream turns to a nightmare. So in the end, I truly think Fields is one step away with a better offensive line and some added weapons. And to note, his chemistry with Chase Claypool was not good. Now, I'm sorry, you know, when it was a fade ball or when it was a go route, they didn't know whether to go back shoulder or over the top. It was those small things in their communication is which that didn't work. But for Fields, we're looking for consistency in the mechanics, technically sound. You can make the reads, Justin. Throw it. And last but not least, I always said it. For Jalen Hurts, it was A.J. Brown. For Josh Allen, it was Stephon Diggs. For Justin Fields... Will it be DJ Moore? One step away.